Our next speaker is going to discuss with us a disease that plagues millions of American children. And because of it, they can't see the world as we all do. Please help me welcome from the College of Optometry, Dr. Jeffrey Wallin. If you have difficulty seeing distant objects clearly when you remove your glasses or your contact lenses, raise your hand. Keep your hand up and look at that person to your right. Now look at that person to your left. It's very likely that at least one of you will be myopic because one out of every three people in the United States has myopia. And for those of you who didn't raise your hands, having myopia is sort of like looking into this scene. So as you notice, the boy who's standing close to you is clear, but the father who's in the background is blurry. And this is what it's like to have myopia. Fortunately, we know that myopia is associated with intelligence. And I feel compelled to tell you right now <laughs> that I'm wearing contact lenses. <laughs> Unfortunately, not everybody is myopic. <laughs> but we do know that 80 to 90% of people in some countries in Asia are actually myopic. And the prevalence, astoundingly, is on the rise. In the 1970s in the United States, 25% of the US population was myopic. Today, 33% of the United States population is myopic. So the prevalence is on the rise. And this is true in many countries around the world. So it's a very common problem. And it costs our global society a lot of money. It costs our global society $8.2 billion per year. To put that into perspective, 8.2 billion seconds ago, the year was 1755. So we spend a lot of money on a very common problem. Jennifer is the motivation for my research. She's a highly myopic child. As a matter of fact, she has so much myopia that the lenses of her glasses actually touch her eyes. And the result of that is that her eyelashes look something very similar to this. Imagine how uncomfortable that would be. Jennifer also didn't have parents who had the resources to take her for appropriate eye care. So she was actually brought to the OSU College of Optometry by a representative from her school, not her parents. And she was examined by a team of people there, including myself. And I decided, after seeing some of the issues that she has, that I really wanted to try to do something for her. Primarily because she reported that that summer, at the beginning of the summer, she went to the lake with her glasses on. But she came home, and her glasses were still at the bottom of the lake. And because she's so highly myopic, she literally couldn't see beyond the tip of her nose. And she spent the entire summer like that. So not only did I want to try to keep her from becoming as myopic as she would have naturally, I also wanted to hopefully do something about that and keep her lenses from becoming as thick as they would have, so she would have been more comfortable. If I could have intervened earlier, I might have been able to do that. Or potentially, I would have been able to keep her from becoming as myopic as she was, which would have allowed her to see a little bit further out clearly so that she wouldn't have withdrawn within herself during the summer, and she would have interacted with the people around her. So myopia occurs when the eye grows too long. Light from distant objects comes in and focuses in front of the seeing part of the eye, or the retina, and that results in blurry vision for distant objects. We don't know precisely what causes myopia, but we do know that it has something to do with both genetics and the environment. So a, a young child is more likely to be myopic if he or she has two myopic parents than if he has one myopic parent. And a young child is more likely to be myopic if he has one myopic parent than if he has no myopic parents. And conversely, a child who plays outdoors more often is less likely to become myopic. 
Now, unfortunately, we don't know why that's the case. We don't know if it's because they get more sunlight or if they get more vitamin D. But we do know that both genetics and the environment play a role in terms of having people become nearsighted and how nearsighted they become. So typically, the onset of myopia is about age eight. So many of you who raised your hands probably remember getting your first pair of glasses at around age eight, nine, or 10 years old. And then it naturally tends to progress until we're about 15 or 16 years old. Now, a few of you may remember getting glasses for the first time in college, and you may remember your, your prescription getting worse for a few years. But by far, the vast majority of people who become myopic become so as young children, and it tends to progress through about the mid-teen years. Now, unfortunately, there are sight-threatening complications that are associated with myopia. As I said, the eye grows too long, and when it does, the contents of the eye can become overly stretched. If the retina or the seeing part of the eye becomes stretched too much, it will become off of the back of the eye, a condition called retinal detachment. And in this particular picture, the retina is actually detached all the way below this line. So this, that means that this person cannot see clearly from that portion of their eye. Imagine your daughter coming home from school and reporting to you that she sees bright flashes of light off in the distance. Because you happen to be highly myopic yourself, you know that that's a potential sign for retinal detachment. So you take your daughter to the eye doctor, and the eye doctor happens to diagnose retinal detachment that's associated with poor vision like this. That's an emergency surgery situation. The whole idea is you want to keep it from getting worse, but unfortunately, we can't make the vision better. So your daughter, in that eye that has a retinal detachment, will have vision like this throughout her life, even wearing glasses or contact lenses. And we happen to know that the more nearsighted you are, the more likely you are to have one of these sight-threatening complications. So you might think we should probably just concentrate most of our efforts on those people who are highly myopic, because they're the ones most likely to have the sight-threatening complications. But when you look at the total number of sight-threatening complications, associated with myopia, what you actually find is that approximately half of those cases occur in people with low amounts of myopia. And that's because low amounts of myopia are so much more common than high amounts of myopia. So we really shouldn't concentrate our research efforts on a particular group of myopic patients. We really need to look at sort of the whole gamut of myopia to see what we can do for them. Sight-threatening complications, though, are rare, but there are complications associated with myopia that happen every single day. Every single day, hundreds of myopic children play sports, and unfortunately, they remove their vision correction in order to play sports. They do so because they report that their glasses get sweaty or that they have difficulty seeing off to the side when they're wearing their glasses. And to be perfectly honest, quite often parents actually tell their children not to wear glasses while they're playing sports because they don't want them to get broken. Well, obviously, when a child plays sports and has vision like this, he or she cannot perform optimally. And this isn't something that happens just on the athletic field. It's something that also happens in the classroom on a daily basis. So our children, if they are in these conditions and not wearing their vision correction, they cannot perform optimally. So what can we do about this? Well, unfortunately, we can't make children less myopic. But what we can do is keep them from becoming as myopic as they might have naturally. And we can do this with commercially available products that you can get at your eye doctor today. These commercially available products are contact lenses that are actually targeted for people over the age of 40 years who have difficulty seeing things up close. They're bifocal contact lenses. These bifocal contact lenses actually trick the eye into growing slower and slowing the progression of myopia. And what we ultimately want to do is figure out how we can manipulate these contact lenses 
to maximize our control of eye growth. So potentially someday we will be able to actually stop the growth of the eye. Today, with excellent predictability, we can actually determine which children will become myopic by the eighth grade simply by measuring their eyeglass prescription in the second grade. So if we combine that information with the information we hope to gain about controlling eye growth, someday we may actually be able to prevent the onset of myopia. So what can you do about this condition? If you have myopic children or you know somebody who has myopic children and you can see that it's very likely to happen, then you can actually enroll your child in research. So at the OSU College of Optometry, we are conducting a federally funded research study in which we are giving children free glasses, free contact lenses, and free eye care for three years. And our goal is to see if we can see how much we can slow the growth of the eye and hopefully learn enough information about controlling eye growth to eventually someday be able to prevent the onset of myopia. But if you happen to not be quite lucky enough to be located in central Ohio or at the University of Houston College of Optometry or near the University of Houston College of Optometry, then you actually still can benefit from this. You can simply go to your local eye care practitioner and ask for soft bifocal contact lens myopia control because as I said, this is a commercially available product today. When you ask your local eye care practitioner for soft bifocal contact lens myopia control, he or she should know about it but may not. And if she doesn't know about it, then she can simply go to our um, study website to find out more information or call our clinic because we're happy to provide them with the information that tells them how to potentially slow the progression of myopia in these children. Because ultimately, what we want to do is reduce the risk of sight-threatening complications that can happen to children. We want to improve their quality of life, and ultimately, we truly want to help them succeed. Thank you.